I believe Sadiq Youssef is probably the most underrated featherweight in the division. You hear a lot of people talk about Bryce Mitchell, Evluev, Arnold Allen, and yes, they're very good, but if you think about Sadiq Youssef, no one brings up his name. He was meant to fight Giga Jakadze, but he pulled out, unfortunately. But he fought this guy called Don Chenise, I think his name was, and in this fight, he looked so impressive. It only lasted 30 seconds. So what happens is he goes for a front kick and with Sadiq Youssef, he's known for like a brawling style. He's got a lot of power in his hands, but recently we haven't seen him getting a lot of knockouts. In his fights, they usually go into decisions, which is boring, but he puts in a lot of impressive performances. Like He dominates the opponent, but it always goes to a decision, but he has a lot of power in his hands, which just doesn't make sense. And then they get close into the tie clinch, and this is where he starts to thrive. Instead of grabbing like a single collar tie, he grabs for a tie clinch. And with the tie clinches, I think they're more effective than the single collar ties. Because with the um, normal tie clinches, he can explode with more power from his knees. Like with a single collar tie, his opponent can see the knees coming. Whereas when you've got two hands on the tie clinch, it's harder to stop it. Because when you've got the tie clinch, he can put pressure onto his head. So he can't actually get out and just hammer his head with knees. So what he was doing is hammering his body with knees and his opponent was trying to swing punches to his body and they weren't effective and then we saw his opponent kept on moving and moving he got Sadiq Yusuf against the cage and this is where we saw something I didn't expect from Sadiq Yusuf somehow as he goes to shoot for a takedown he grabs the net for a guillotine so I'm like all right yeah that's good that he's going for a guillotine but then he locks it in tight pulls guard flattens him out like into top mount almost it's like a mix between half guard and top mount and that was not like your normal guillotine where you end up in top mount and just pull on the head like look at rock hold against michael bisping it weren't that type of guillotine it was like a weird variation of a guillotine where it was like mixed into like a twisted position nothing like a twister but it was a mix between half guard and top mount and as he pulled onto the neck he put so much pressure on it and it made him tap out and what i have to say about this is his opponent He's no pushover again. I think he was like 12 and 3 going into this fight. And again, Sadiq Youssef is not known for having submissions. That's why I thought that was a very impressive win. Going into that, I thought he would have finished him like via TKO or something. But no, instead he showed that he's actually got jiu-jitsu. And I know he can wrestle in his fights. And he's got quite a lot of unanimous decisions. He's shown that he actually has got submissions. And this is the second fastest fight in featherweight history, I believe. And I don't think he's ready for someone like Volkanovski next. But if he can fight someone like maybe Giga Chikadze, I don't know why he didn't end up fighting him. I have no idea what he's happening. But I think that would have been a good fight to make. Because in that fight, you've got two strikers on the feet. But then again, I know Sadiq Yusuf can wrestle. We might not see it too much in his fights. But if he's got good jiu-jitsu, that doesn't always mean he's got good wrestling. But I think he actually does have good wrestling. But he doesn't show it a lot. He's like a balanced fighter. But we mainly see his striking. We finally saw his submission. And what I like is it wasn't just any old like rear naked choke and just make him tap out. It was a guillotine. And with guillotines, they're very hard to pull off. Because most of the time, when someone locks in a guillotine, their opponent usually powers out of it with their head so usually the people who you see who get guillotine chokes are very highly skilled at jiu-jitsu and for him to get his first submission from a guillotine shows a lot because maybe you don't have to be the most skilled but i would say that personally or you want to be on the heavier side so you can put on a tighter grip but i don't think he's too big as a featherweight he's like a normal size featherweight and he's doing it on a normal size featherweight that's why i think it's more impressive than it might look he also called out Chan Sung Young, which I believe would be a good fight. But if I'm honest, I think he should fight someone like Ilya Tapiria. That would really test him because they've got similar styles now when I think about it. A lot of power in their hands. Ilya Tapiria, he's only got 4 KOs slash TKOs, but Sadiq Yusuf has got 6. He's got some submissions, but I would say submissions definitely go to Tapiria because he's got about 8. Sadiq Yusuf only has 1, and I think that's a perfect matchup to me. Because if we do Chan Sung Young, I think he's on the older side now. He seems a bit mentally defeated. He was talking about retiring after the Volkanovski fight. So I don't think it makes sense for him to fight him yet. But then again, if he fights someone like Ilya Tapiria, that's a quite risky fight. Because there's a high chance of him losing that. Because he's got so much hype around him. He's undefeated. Sadiq Yusuf is 13-2, and two, only losing to Arnold Allen. And that's not a bad loss because we know Arnold Allen's probably one of the best prospects in the featherweight division. Some would say the best. 
and he's about to fight Calvin Qatar. And depending on what happens in that fight, you can't blame him losing to Arnold Allen. But I think the best fight to make with him right now would be either Ilya Tapiria or Chan Sung Young. But if he wants the easiest fight, he's got to go for Chan Sung Young. And that would push him higher up the ranking, moving him up towards the featherweight title. Compared to if he fights Ilya Tapiria, which is a risky matchup. And there's a high chance that he doesn't win that fight. And he's 12th and 0. We know Tapiria gets hit in the earlier stages of the fight. But as the fight goes on, he starts to improve. Like he got knocked down against Jai Herbert, carried on and eventually got the KO on him. So I think, yeah. So he should fight Chan Sung Young if he can. But if he wants to take a riskier fight and put more credit to his name, he should fight someone like Ilya Tapiria. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of that fight? Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.